this week. So uh, this this module is all about intellectual property, intellectual property law. So if you don't know what that is, uh, it has to do with patents, trademarks, and copyrights. So there's a couple of questions. Why do we need to know about law, intellectual property law, uh, in, a, in a class about uh, American business or technology? Well, the answer is easy. Um, if you think about inventions like the light bulb, so that's Thomas Edison in the 1880s, or the telephone, Alexander Graham Bell, um, those were patented inventions. So uh, it's important that we know a little bit about intellectual property and patent law, and it's also really important to the history of the country and the history of industry in the U.S. So, um, as I said, intellectual property law revolves around these three concepts of patents, trademarks, and copyrights. When you go through the reading, you'll learn what those things are, but I'll give you a, a, a real quick synopsis. Uh, patents are inventions, so if you invent like a new engine uh, or a new pharmaceutical, for example, um, or a new process, um, those are all patents if you invent like a new wheel or some object, a new basketball hoop, and it's something that's new and unique that no one's ever thought of before, a new kind of fork, um, those would all be patentable items. They're all tangible items. Uh, formulations for uh, pharmaceuticals are also included in that list. Trademarks have to do with like logos and names. So if you start a company and you want to call it Amazon.com, you can't because that's a trademark name. Or if you want to use the Coca-Cola logo on something, you can't because it's a trademarked logo. So that's what a trademark is. And copyrights are written works or artistic works. So uh, if you think about uh, the logo for Coca-Cola, for well, not the logo, sorry, that's trademark. I screwed up on that one. If you think about a book or a song or any written work like a, a, a web page with writing, those are all copyrights. So again, patents are generally inventions and objects. Trademarks are trade names and logos. And copyrights are written works like songs and books. So think of authors. So um, again, it's relevant to our class because we're going to be reading about you know, different inventions over time in different businesses. And oftentimes you might read about something that was patented and you need to know what it is. So a patent is basically giving someone a monopoly on their invention. So if I invent a new fork to eat with that's totally new and different that no one's ever thought of before or a new eating utensil in general, if I apply for a patent and the patent office grants me a patent, that means I have the exclusive rights to either manufacture or license that item for 20 years. So in essence, I get a monopoly on my new eating utensil. No one else can make it, no one else can copy it. And uh, so therefore, a patent gives inventors incentive because they know if they put the time and energy into inventing something that they're gonna have exclusive rights to sell it. Now, the reason this is important, think about a pharmaceutical. So. Uh, let's say a drug company is coming up with a new drug uh, to cure or to fight cancer, they will put you know, 15, 20 years into the development of this drug and pay researchers and, and lab time and get FDA approval, costing millions and millions and millions of dollars. Uh, that pharmaceutical company wants to be sure that they get their money back after they in, invent this new drug. If there was no exclusivity, no one would spend the money or time up front to invent anything like that because, you know, once you invent it, everyone could copy it and you wouldn't return your investment. So that's why patents are important. They give inventors an incentive to invent things and also give inventors the uh, confidence that they're going to make money off of what they invent. There's a couple of different schools of thought on this, and so remember the incentive part when we're talking about patents, because that's important. I'm not going to put a lot of time into inventing something if I know someone's going to steal my idea down the road. So there's that part. The other thing that's important as far as American history is concerned is how the founding fathers or the framers of the country and the Constitution felt about intellectual property law. So there's really kind of two sides to this. There's Thomas Jefferson and Ben Franklin. They were not pro-patent law people. They were skeptical that there should be patents. And then you can look at Alexander Hamilton and James Madison. Uh, they were all for patent law and both sides are understandable. So if you think about the American Revolution, early American history, one of the reasons that 
uh, the framers or the founders wanted to break away from England with the Declaration of Independence is because they thought that uh, the English government had too much power. They were tyrannical and they wanted to control everything. And so people like Jefferson and Franklin didn't feel that anybody should have so much power that they can control anything. Now, how does that relate to inventors and intellectual property law? It's easy. If I invent a new kind of drug that can cure everyone of cancer uh, and I have exclusive control over that, then I'm going to get wealthy do it and, and in, in essence uh, I can control the market and it sort of goes against the notion of democracy and this idea of taking care of people in public, the common good. So, you know, someone like Jefferson was afraid of anyone having too much power, including a patent holder. And Franklin uh, really felt that if you invent something useful, you should just turn over the rights to that to the public because it's useful. Uh, Franklin invented the Franklin stove, which was a, a new kind of wood stove that was very efficient. And instead of giving, getting it patented, he shared the design with anyone so anyone could make that. Uh, in today's language, you've heard of open source like computer code, open source code. Uh, Linux operating system is open source. That means that anyone can take that code and manipulate it for their own use as opposed to an operating system like Windows uh, or like the Mac OS, which uh, have, have parts that are uh, patented or protected with intellectual property laws in some way. So that's sort of the difference. On the other side, you have people like Alexander Hamilton and James Madison. Uh, they were all for patent law because they felt like in order for the country to grow, in order for people to have incentive to invent cool new things that would help the country grow economically, inventors needed to have some sort of assurance that their work would be protected. So that's sort of the debate during the constitutional period. But you know how it turns out, if you look at the Constitution, you look at Article 1, Section 8, Clause 8 of the Constitution from 1789, it states that the Congress should have power to promote progress and science of the useful arts. So this idea that we want to encourage people to invent is really the basis of patent law, and it goes all the way back to the Constitution. So, you know, the debates are still going on today, and I'm sure you've heard about, um, you know, pharmaceutical companies, you know, charging, you know, millions of dollars or $10,000 a month for certain drugs uh, that, that can help people. Um, you know, the reason why is, is because they have a monopoly or they have a patent and they want to get a return on their investment. So, you know, you can understand both sides of the argument. Either I want to make sure I make money at the same time. Um, if we have something that helps everyone, we should share it with the public. So that's sort of the big debate. It's still going on today. Um, so as far as what you need to know for this chapter, just know the difference between patents, trademarks, and copyrights. Uh, mainly we'll be talking about patents in this class on and off, not every module, but, but if you're reading about Thomas Edison down the road and you're wondering, hmm, why did he go to all this trouble? You know, one of the reasons is because he knew he could get his light bulb patented and uh, he would have some sort of guarantee as far as his investment's concerned. So that's it for Module 4. Everyone's doing a great, uh, great job with the class. Keep up the good work, and I'll talk to you again next week. Take care now. Bye-bye.